scratch and sniff. Trust in me. Trust in me. Shut your eyes. Trust in. Welcome to SNS Online, where today we investigate the mysterious world of hypnosis through the eyes and ears of one of the most leading hypnotherapists in the country and vice president of the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis. But Peter Mabbott will have his work cut out today if he thinks he can hypnotise me in the studio. He reckons he's already done it earlier in the green room, but I have no recollection. And just between you and me, I think he's getting a little ahead of himself. Anyway, let's hear what he has to say on this most fascinating of subjects. You're listening to SNS Online. I'm Queen Nefertiti. So, Peter, welcome to Scratch and Sniff. It's only taken a, a year and a half in the making, us actually syncing up together. Obviously, both very busy people. Um, uh, welcome. Thank you. I've just been reading your uh, your uh, resume, as they say. I've got it all here. Google is a brilliant place, isn't it? I, was say, uh, I didn't know I had to resume. Uh, well, yeah, but, well, several. <laughs> uh, clinical hypnotherapist, uh, and you run the London College of Clinical Hypnosis, where you provide training and hypnotherapy to master degree level. So you're proper clever, aren't you, Peter? Well, I like to pretend I am. Yes, and another thing, another Fabertier cap. December 2013, you were made Vice President of the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis. How good is that? I'm rather pleased about that. It means I get to oversee what people are doing. So uh... I think we should have a round of applause for that. Um, I mean, of course, obviously, Vice President isn't actually President. So uh, when are you going to sort of, you know, um, smarten up your act a bit and get to the top? <laughs> um, when he pops his clogs, I would imagine. Well, soap on the stairs can always be arranged uh, so with the I feed. <laughs> so fantastic. Now, another thing, obviously, from a more media point of view, you're a bit of a media pundit, shall we say, when well, it comes to yes. comes to radio and some TV, BBC Breakfast you've yep. done, and um, all, all in the name of hypnotherapy. Of course. Um, Nick Ferrari, Vanessa Feltz, bless her cotton socks. Um, <laughs> um, I, you know, you're not... Not a, like a permanent this morning hypnotherapist who pops in and no. out and solves people's problems. No, not yet. Would you um, like to be? I don't know. Uh, the idea does appeal to me. Mm. It does appeal to me, though. And the money. <laughs> yeah, but interestingly, that's not the thing that motivates me. OK. I yeah. am more motivated by what it is that I do. I'm, I'm very passionate about my career, about yeah. the subject that I teach and also the people that I treat. Mm. And mm. my prime motive um, is very much about getting that information across to people, mm getting the proper view of clinical hypnotherapy put out there as opposed to the um, somewhat warped and jaded view that the stage hypnotists have. You're back in the room. It's a brand new primetime game show with a twist. Our contestants have been hypnotised. Now, obviously, um, if you're doing a job like being a clinical hypnotherapist, then you've got to have a passion for it. I oh, would yes. have thought it'd be the same with uh, being an actor or anything like that. My only point about the money in this morning is it doesn't hurt, does it? It not doesn't hurt. All. Not at all. Pays for the holidays. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Peter, what is hypnotherapy? Um, well, hypnotherapy, very simply, is the use of the state of this thing that we call hypnosis or trance uh, in order to help make people change the way they're thinking, the way they're feeling, the way they're responding to situations. For example, um, performance anxiety. You know, we're sitting here in the middle of a very glamorous studio over which I doth covet every aspect of it. <laughs> um, I run my own 
little podcast and that's just a camera and uh, a microphone and a computer. Um, this one's beautiful, but um, yeah, but you, your podcast sounds fantastic, and I could kill your kill for your ratings. Not kill your ratings, <laughs> I could kill for your ratings. Oh, well, thank you to my students for that one. Um, but it, what I mean, what I was saying there is, you know, people going into a scenario like this, being interviewed, um, appearing on TV, whatever it might be, stepping out onto the stage. Um, well, speeches, political speeches, I would have thought. Absolutely, um, I've done quite a, a lot of work as well with some of the. Uh, um, X Factor Muppets and people like that um, and it's it's getting the mindset helping people to get that mindset that when they step out they can be calm they can be relaxed they focus on what they're about to do what they are doing they forget the inherent nerves that they have and then walk off and we do this in this thing that we call trance now well, the big mistake that people make about hypnosis and one that still sort of puts palm to face um, is they think I've got magical powers um, you and I are both a little bit um, passionate about a certain television programme called Doctor Who absolutely bring it on can you make the TARDIS appear yeah I wish please but because I have that passion, people kind of uh, think I'm the master, um, pre-Missy master, not uh, Missy. Um, because yeah, I'm going to ask you about that. Uh, can you be um, subjected to hypnosis and do things against your will? Well, that's the big thing. You know, much as I love the master, I love that character. No, you can't. Um, that well, surely, thing. if you suggested it in the right sort of way, like this, this is right. This is the best decision for you. Could, could you not, you know, why politicians get people to believe in them? Oh, yeah, you can do, you can use persuasive language patterns. Um, you can use persuasive behaviours. But ultimately, you, the person on the receiving end is always, always, always going to um, have choice as to whether they respond. OK. So if you are pushing somebody to go really strongly against their their moral code, then they may well re not respond to you in the slightest. Mm. But, interesting, interesting. But, and with, with hypnotherapy, the therapy part of this is that we basically engage with somebody who wants to make a change in their life. So I've got a compliant, complicit person sitting in front of me who allows me, and note my language, allows me to guide them into a, a trance state. And in that state, we can then help them to make the changes that they want to make. The state of trance itself is totally natural um, people think it's a magical state that I create in, in people um, no it's not I can teach somebody how to hypnotise somebody in 10 minutes max it's what you do in that state that's important the state we use people sometimes call it prayer sometimes call it concentration um, that state of mind when you're walking a, a particular route that you know well and your mind drifts or wanders and suddenly you're at your destination and you're standing there thinking well I have no idea how I got here but I got here safely um, that's all this thing that we would call trance an altered state of awareness uh, media uses it all the time uh, when we have these things like product placement being placed into programs uh, what happens is is the people in the media, they understand that people watching that particular programme will be in one of these altered states. So they're engaging with the people on that um, uh, on the TV screen, they're engaging with the action and so on. And then they kind of put that water bottle in front of, um, um, in front of them. You will never see the water bottle kind of the label hidden. It's always full on. They're not saying drink Mabbit's water. What they're saying <laughs> is because you identify with this particular character, that water is probably going to be tasting very nice for you next time you're in the supermarket. Perhaps you can just pick that one up as opposed to whatever um, other bottle of water that might be out there. I'm surprised you didn't get into advertising, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I tend to be a little bit more ethical, I think. Yeah. Well, I like to think I am. Absolutely. So in, all I'm doing is helping somebody into that particular state. Um, and then we can help them to do some pretty amazing things because after all, the mind, the brain is an incredible thing.
I mean, I was going to say I compare it with. I mean, I have a big issue reading books. It's not that I can't read, and I, I when I was very young, I was quite、um, ahead of the class with my reading. And now, as a grown up, I, I find、uh, the books I tend to read tend to be things I need to review for the show, and then that forces me into a situation where I have to read.、It. And then I enjoy the process very much. But I have, I, I'm so distracted by by the world and my thoughts that to get into a state of It feels like a state of hypnosis, but reading a book because obviously you're creating images in your mind. You're sort of aware where you're where you are. You could be sitting, you could be walking and reading, like texting and reading. But at the same time, there's there's um, you're allowing yourself to to get into that trance. Would you compare the two? They quite similar. Totally. Totally. When I'm reading a book or reading a comic, yes, I still read comics.、Um, I become fully engaged with that.、Mm. Um, I'm reading、um, the book Starship Troopers at the moment,、uh, the original、um, Robert Heinlein version,、um, okay. and I'm so engrossed in that. I mean, it's a short book, but I'm reading the pages. Absolutely nothing like the film, thank goodness.、Um, oh, the film was great. The film was brilliant, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm reading it, I'm Creating the characters in my mind,、mm. the dialogue, the the scenery,、um, everything becomes a very three dimensional experience, and I kind of shut down my awareness of everything that's going on outside,、mm. uh, and just engage with that. Because I start panicking, thinking, "Oh my God, what's this person look like?" And I think perhaps I've just been born from the TV generation, and I, I'm thinking. Right, have I decided he looks like this? That I, it's not the natural thing. There, there are barriers that I think I've created myself, where I can't. And I know it's it's tragic because there is so much literature out there, and I hope in my lifetime I will start to absorb more. But it's,、uh, I mean, my partner loves reading, and he said the、mm. other day, he said it's so wonderful just to p- pick up a book in the middle, and you're so excited to find out w- what's going to happen. You just sit on the sofa, then you're straight back in it again. And I felt, I really felt. Quite envious, but I didn't. I didn't have that capacity. I mean, I do, but 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 it, it, I have to work at it. I have to work at it, which also suggests that I might not be the best subject for hypnosis. I have、um, had no, people. Not at all. Really? Yeah, it's it, it's all to do with the relationship you have with the person、um, that's going to be guiding a person into hypnosis. So if you've got good rapport, if you've got a good working relationship going, and they're prepared to allow themselves to just explore something different, then it's going to be fine. Okay. I mean, I I I, I have actually given up smoking, but a few years ago I bought this、uh, CD of Paul McKenna or whatever, and、um, I had put the CD on. Then I I went to switch for light or to lie on the sofa,、mm-hmm. and they said, right, just relax, count you down, you know. And then I I had an itch, so I started scratching really quickly, and then getting it out of the way, then relaxing again. But I had another itch, and then after about five minutes, I was scratching away as if I had fleas or something like that. Went to reset the CD, stubbed my toe. Uh, put the light on and had a fag just to pass the time. Those, so it didn't really work for me. But、uh, you see, as a, as a therapist, as a hypnotherapist, what you were experiencing was known as paresthesias. So as you're going into trance, those itches start to appear,、mm. um, and you become aware of them.、Um, if you had been guided by somebody, say I was working with you,、yeah. I would be aware of that. I would be allowing you to scratch, and I'd be suggesting that as you scratch, so you find the comfort flowing through your body, and how and how soon it is before you just forget about that itching. And just journey into a wonderful deep, deep inner experience. You see, that's liberating in itself. Just hearing that.、Uh, I mean, I have the same problem with sleep. I start、mm. fidgeting during sleep.、It、takes me a long time to physically get to sleep because of all these fidgets. So, yeah, there could be an awful lot you could teach me today, Peter. Oh yes. <laughs> Do you think the mind, and indeed our state of mind, can directly hinder or benefit our body, including the individual organs in our body, blood circulation, etc., etc.? One hundred percent, yes.、Um, in the olden days,、um, prior to、uh, the advent of, of of clinical hypnotherapy proper,、um, there was this whole idea that the mind and body were completely separate. That the mind n- does not interact with the body. The body does not interact with the mind. Now, over the past, I would say. 
10, 15 years, that's really been turned on its head. The, people like myself who have been in the mind, working with mind-body connection for a long, long, long time, we've always known and been aware of this connection. However, science, because it likes things in numbers and all of that, has kind of poo-pooed the whole thing. But then, guess what? They discovered that actually there are things happening in the brain, there are things happening in the mind that are influencing the working of the immune system and and the, and then the other way around so now we have a full understanding that actually the way you think the way you feel determines how you will recover from a particular um, uh, illness or how you can keep yourself fitter and healthier. So this whole idea of positive well-being, healthy mind is a healthy body, actually has a lot of credence behind it, a lot of research behind it. Mm. Um, positive mental imagery, positive thinking, uh, glass half full person, you're going to be healthier. Mm. Get a cold you're not going to succumb to it. Mm. Um, or if you do succumb to it, you will recover better. Mm. And we see a lot of this with patients with cancer, patients with who've got pain-related issues, mm. patients who come in with all sorts of seemingly unrelated problems that hypnotherapy shouldn't be able to help. But actually, it can help. Now, want to make sure everybody understands I do not hypnotize away disease what I do is I work with the mindset that um, that the person has when they've got that disease state and so their emotional response to the, the disease is important you know, we're not saying we hypnotise them to go, whoopee, I've got cancer. Um, <laughs> no, far from that. What we do is we, we work with them to say, OK, I've got cancer. This is pretty poor thing for me to have. However, I'm going to start coping. I'm going to look after myself. I'm going to be able to learn to relax. I'm going to start to keep myself fit. Um, and I'm going to really start to change my life. And with that, no matter what the prognosis might be, um, if somebody's got a terminal cancer, it can help that ease that process to to end of life with somebody who and thankfully majority of cancers nowadays aren't terminal somebody who, who has some other form of cancer they can actually find that they benefit cope with the chemotherapy or whatever else they might be having and have a better path to recovery a much more acceptable path to yeah. recovery and uh, and obviously with certain cancers like that it could be a matter of between life and death whether they do have a a, a good mental um, attitude, so it, this is this is very serious stuff. Totally, it's been demonstrated. There's been the research in uh, in America, I think it was, where they were in their accident and emergency um, rooms, and they also did it with people in surgery, and they were looking at what was being said around various people when they were crashing or when they were in a serious life or death scenario, and what they discovered was that where you had people who are being very positive come on you're going to make it you're going to make it as opposed to negative this one's not going to make it this one's going to die the ones who were surrounded by positive people had a better outcome they more than likely got through it um, whereas there was a higher mortality with people who who were having the negative things sure i mean obviously you're not suggesting hypnotherapy over major heart surgery but as a compliment yes uh, it's it's a very very important one it, it is and even the nhs is now beginning to see that Good. that link uh, with some of the work that we're doing we're doing some work in malaysia where i also um, we have a, a, a training center down there and i do some research down there where we're looking at the use of hypnosis as the only anaesthetic in various types of surgery. So lumpectomies, removing lump from breast, hernia repair and so on. So, um, and that's fascinating to see. So you, sorry, you, you're talking about hypnotising people so they don't take any pain, yep. really? So, so, I mean, there, there was talk about that years ago with... Uh, going to the dentist for, yes. for children. So this, this is now accelerated. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I, I've done it for myself at the dentist's um, because I sort of had to think to myself, well, if I'm going to be doing this to other people, I really ought to make sure this is this works. Right. And so I went through um, a filling and I felt nothing. 
Amazing. I mean, I, that was my next question. Do you practice what you preach? And is it possible for the physician to heal thyself? It is. Yeah, I, I ah. practice self-hypnosis every day. Now, is that, do you have to look in the mirror or? No, I just close my eyes and bang, I'm there. Right. On the DLR on my way home, I'll do it. On the tube on my way home, I'll do it. Set myself up for work on my way in, I'll do it. So, um Presumably you're not going too deep if you're, say, on, on the Docklands Light Railway or the Tube. You can still be aware of your environment and yet and be quite... the thing about hypnosis. It's an altered state of awareness. So even though I'm really deep and I do go very, very deep, I will always wake up at the right point. Always one stop before I have to get off. <laughs> it's quite amazing. And it's you just, I just feel myself coming out of the trance. The first time that I ever went into a really deep trance, and I always tell my students this, was literally I was on the DLR. And in those days I was living down very close to Island Gardens. And so it was quite a long journey. And I was sitting there practicing self-hypnosis and the next thing I remember was having this very three-dimensional tangible image of the of a DLR train flying through the sky in front of me uh, the colors were very vibrant and all of that and I just remember sitting there thinking I've done it I've got deep trance at last I'm there um, so it was a very real experience and yet the moment it came to the stop before I would get off bang I came out of it so basically, to, to all intents and purposes, it just looked like you were having a, a nap on the tube. Yeah. A lot of the people that you see on the tube or on a bus or on, on a train, um, they're kind of sitting there nodding their head and nodding off. They're in that state somewhere between being awake and being asleep, mm. which we call hypnosis. Mm. But does a more trained hypnotherapist doing it themselves, does that allow you to feel a lot fresher when you do wake up? Does it oh, yeah. really energise you in the way that half sleep in a tube wouldn't? I teach power napping. Um, oh, here I here I go giving you all my secrets. I teach power Give them napping, all, please. and all power napping is is self hypnosis. That's all it is. So five ten minutes self hypnosis refreshes you. Bang, you're out, ready to keep going. So um, there's quite a few people trotting around the world um, who power nap, but all it is is self hypnosis. Fascinating stuff. You're listening to Peter Mabbott on SNS Online. Scratch and sniff. Online! With Nick Randall. OK, it's time for the soundtrack of your life, uh, Peter. What have uh, you got for us? Well, I'm a bit schizophrenic in my music choices. Um, Aren't we all ducky? <laughs> absolutely. But I think the one person, one artiste that, influenced my life an awful lot when I was young um, was a wonderful genteel character called Alice Cooper. Um, <laughs> and of all the tracks that he has ever produced, uh, there's one that really links into my joy of school. I was very, very, really, really lucky with, with my school days. And it's not the one you think. It's not School's Out, um, uh. which is a fantastic track. But it's uh, a track that he did called Alma Mater, which is it's kind of a gentle track. It's all about his, his journey through school. Um, and I always, whenever I hear of it, I remember a particular sunny summer's afternoon where I was sitting in my bedroom being a typical recalcitrant teenager, um, listening to this track and just feeling absolutely marvellous about it. Rain is falling down my cheek, searching for the sea. Tomorrow, like the rain, I'll be back home again. The bus as it pulls out of view. Someday, like that bus, I will be leaving too. But you know, it breaks my heart to leave you. Camelback, my heart. 
Alice Cooper and Alma Mater. You're listening to Peter Mabbott on SNS Online. And if you want to comment on this or any other show, then why not join our Facebook page, SNS Online, or Twitter, which is Scratch and Tweet. Past shows can be downloaded for free by searching for SNS Online on SoundCloud or Mixcloud by searching for me, Nick Randall. Taking you down a marble staircase, Cafe. 40, 39, 38, going down. You got your sticks, please, Kath? Don't slip. Down we go, deep slumber, deep slumber. 37, 34, 28, going down, going down. 20, 18, down we go, Kath. 15, losing control. Hold on to your sticks, please. Under, deeper, 15. Okay, Peter, let's go back to your early days. Uh, I'm regressing you in there. <laughs> Five, four, three. Um, oh, you've got a good voice for him. But bless you. Uh, yeah, good voice for silent radio, as they say. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, what was it? What, what uh, got you into this in the first place? Well, I was originally in the field of psychopharmacology, so... Say what? (laughs) Precisely. Um, Drugs and the brain, basically. Um, So I was working at uh, Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital all those many, many years ago. And eventually I got the opportunity to essentially take voluntary redundancy. About the same time, I was thinking about changing career anyway, and a lot of people had said to me, oh, you're very good at listening to people. Why don't you become a counsellor? Yes, absolutely. That's what I was doing. I was looking around counselling courses, and I came across a hypnotherapy course with something called the London College of Clinical Hypnosis. And me being me, I kind of got fascinated by that but then I thought well don't just look at one thing explore all the different options there this sounds good so I looked at lots and lots of different colleges and always came back to the LCCH simply because it had the ethos of evidence basis it was working um, in research kind of fitted what I was doing as a as a psychopharmacologist and um, if I don't make that jump now I'm never going to do it scary world out there self-employment and quite um, often redundancy is for kickstart people need isn't it psychologically well, it certainly was for me totally totally because i took the opportunity took a payout from them and managed to set myself up in business mm. and at the same time i'd expressed an interest with the lcch and i've got a little bit of experience seeing people and i wanted to become a lecturer. I like to think I've got the gift of the gab. And I got the opportunity to go on the lecture training scheme, which takes a couple of years to do. At the end of that, I was in full-time practice, obviously. I was then able to start lecturing. And as we went through that, I then started getting more and more involved with the college. And over the years, I've kind of worked my way through and now run the college somehow. Fantastic. Well, uh, congratulations on your extraordinary, fantastic success. And um, obviously, you know, fits like a glove. This this obviously really suits you and you're utilising so many skills that perhaps you wouldn't have done if you had gone down a different route or that redundancy wasn't available. Oh, I wouldn't be doing what I do now. I wouldn't have done the things that I've done now. I've achieved so many of my goals, you know, been on TV. Crime watch. (laughs) 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 Um, I've got plenty more. I'm here all week. (laughs) Scratch and sniff. Now, one thing, um, Peter, if, say, Tom Hardy walked in, who's always a bit of a favourite of mine, a um, bit, bit, bit of a school schoolgirl crush, um, <laughs> and I said, look into my eyes because you want to have it off with me. You want to have it off. Um, would that work? Um, no, you'd probably end up in A&E. Oh, why would that be? <laughs> because unless he really wanted to have it off with you, yeah. um, you well, if he's very nice, he'll laugh at you. If not, he'll punch you. <laughs> So that wouldn't work then. Perhaps we should move on from that one. <laughs> two, two, one. You're back in the room. My brother, who was also hypnotised, I think, for uh, to stop smoking, and this was somebody actually in the room, and apparently when he was counting him down from three, two, one, uh, my brother said he could have opened his eyes at three, yes, but he didn't want to offend the hypnotherapist. And again, this is something that so many people have the misconception about. You can always open your eyes. I tell everyone I work with, you know, throughout this session, you're going to hear probably everything that I say. Um, you'll probably find you 
can feel you can get up and walk out. And if you want to, absolutely, you can get up, walk out. If you want to open your eyes, open your eyes. If you want to keep them closed, keep them closed. <laughs> Basically, do what you want to do for you. Don't do it for me. Mm. And that that's that's the problem. I, People yeah. have a m misconception that they're going to be under our power. They're not going to be able to open their eyes. Or they're trying to be too polite like I would be. And then mm. that would add extra pressure for me, which would detract from what's going on. Oh, totally. Because mm. if somebody wants to open their eyes, I want them to open their eyes so mm. I know what, what they're experiencing. Mm. If they're li sort of lying there on the um, couch so with their eyes closed and they're thinking, I want to open them, I want to open them, I want to open them, mm. and that interferes with everything, well... What, what, what mm. good are they, you know, what, what good is it for them to be there? Mm. So I'm always, always telling people, if you want to say anything, say something. If you want to get up and walk around, get up and walk around. Mm. You know, when I work with kids, um, and kids are brilliant hypnotic subjects, I mean, just watch a child at play. Um, oh, you know, God, absolutely. You know, when I think back to my days, and yes, I'm going down the Doctor Who route, um, mm. of Doctor Who and the Daleks and all of that, and my, my TARDIS was a couple of, bricks of Lego. In those <laughs> days, we didn't have those pretty toys that they have nowadays. A couple of bricks of Lego, um, a couple of soldiers with the Doctor and the companions. My, my, my title is just a lump of coal and a stick, yep. which I usually got, got beaten with. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would have died to get beaten with a lump of coal and a stick. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but it, it was when I was playing that, I didn't see my lump of coal and a stick. I didn't see the soldiers. I didn't see the Lego brick. It was what I wanted it to be. Mm. So this is another nerdy question. <laughs> Say I'm a willing subject. I would love you to make me believe that the police box TARDIS is materialising next to me so I could actually have that experience of seeing it appear. And I wanted you to do that to me. Is, is that sort of possible? It is possible. Um, it's a bit, bit silly, but I'm just, just curious. It is possible, but it would depend on, on, on how suggestible you are. Yeah, absolutely. And whether or not you're willing to suspend your disbelief um, and just engage with that experience. So, yeah, it, it can be possible. Uh, in that trance state, we do have these things called negative and positive hallucinations. Mm -hmm. And they're doing some interesting stuff with virtual reality in hypnosis yeah. at the moment, where they have the virtual reality goggles on and you are being hypnotised. And whilst you're being hypnotised, you're opening your eyes up and seeing virtual reality. What, but but you, you've created in your mind? Partly created in your mind and also partly created by the virtual reality program. And the suggestion that they're giving, yeah. That's it, I yes. understand. OK, Peter, it's part two of your music choice. Uh, what have you got for us? Well, fitting in with the schizophrenic side of my uh, music choices, um, it's Allegre's Miserere. Um, the reason I love this piece of music is it so emotive for me. If I'm in a good mood and happy mood, I find it so elating. If I'm feeling a bit down, then I can blub my eyes out to it. But it's one of those pieces that I can just sit down, put on in a darkened room, a candle burning, and just be with it. And meditate and uh, oh, yes. take yourself under. Wonderfully hypnotic. Which is very appropriate. Let's give it a go.
Allegra's Miserere, performed for us there by the choir of New College Oxford. Now, Peter, I don't feel I'm a good subject for hypnosis, but I trust you implicitly, and we've known each other quite a while. Um, so I don't have those sort of issues that perhaps I would with somebody I didn't know at all. Obviously, we're in a studio situation here. I, I have done something similar to, uh, to this with um, Carmen Harris, who is a spiritual healer. And so, it's again, it's about suggestion, that sort of thing. And I did feel... I felt something was going on. So I, I felt that we could break through this very artificial environment. I, I'd be very curious t- to see if, and I, I will give it my best shot. Um, do you think it might be possible? I can always try. I would say that in terms of my issues, um, I have put on quite a bit of weight in the last couple of years. I'm trying to sort it out now. But eating habits seems to be a big issue for me. It's like I need to reward myself when I've had a hard day or this, that and the other. And obviously the older you get, metabolism, blah, 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 blah. That's an excuse. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the that's... older you get, it's you choose to slow down, therefore your metabolism sh- slows down. OK, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm in a lovely, fluffy, settled 10 year relationship, okay. which is part of it. But oh, I'm yes. not prepared mm-hmm. to completely give up my no. youth, um, even though I am at a delicate sort of older age. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and, and also sleep can be an issue and other things of anxiety, worrying about uh, people might have got the wrong idea. I've said something wrong. Those sort of things can spiral out of control in my head as well. Just ask my partner. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to completely change my life in about 20 minutes. Minutes, but if you can just fix all those for me, bring okay. it on. Yes, I can do it. Look into my eyes, look into my eyes, the eyes, the eyes, not around the eyes, don't look around the eyes, look into my eyes. You're under. You're back in the room. There you are. Done. You didn't I'm even ba- realise you, you'd been hypnotised. <laughs> I'm back in the room. So um, what? how should we start? Um, well, we, first of all, start by you making yourself comfortable. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable. And the next thing is um, both feet flat on the floor. Yes. And your hands resting comfortably somewhere on your thighs or wherever it might be. J- j- just on, on here. Yeah, on the That's table. That's fine. Yeah, That's great. fine. Okay. And when you're ready, mm-hmm. just lean back and close your eyes. Okay, I shall close my eyes. That's right. Just with your eyes comfortably closed. You can just begin to, for a moment, focus on your breathing. Just noticing the air as you're breathing in, breathing out, and any unwanted out. thoughts, any unwanted feeling. Your mind drift and wander if it wishes as you drift down deeper, choosing to follow a particular thought, maybe just imagine feeling. Walking down the most beautiful path. Imagine walking down that path, taking ten gentle 
comforting steps and with each step that you take as you take those steps so I'll there in the background talking directly to your unconscious awareness so that you continue to respond to me at this deep unconscious level no matter where your mind drifts again go. remembering times when you felt good positive and present in the moment confident to each and every one of these times picking up resources from those times what were you thinking how were you feeling how were you behaving Eating healthily, sleeping well, calm in thought, calm, not worrying in your mind as much about what other people think, far from it. Nothing and no one seems to affect you in quite the same way as they used You're to. going to hear me count from one all the way through to ten. In each number that I count, you become more and more awake. By the count of eight, your eyes will have opened. By the count of ten, you will be fully wide awake. Every part of you back here with me in the present, all normal healthy sensations returning to your limbs. And you'll wake up feeling fine, refreshed, energised, looking forward to enjoying the rest of the evening, looking forward to enjoying being the person you want to be and so as I count from one to ten so you become more and more awake at the count of eight your eyes will have opened by the count of ten you'll be fully wide awake so ready one two three four five six seven eight nine ten wide 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 awake welcome back young man <laughs> that was uh in it, that was really intense you gave me the full works there as well that was Certainly very did. very kind of you i should i should be um stuffing a 50 quid note down, <laughs> down you. <laughs> um yes that was, that's very very interesting i still think i i do have resistance but at the end of the day you were just saying things that i wanted to hear mm -hmm. um and um I, I found that um, I had this lovely place I was visualising when you told me to go somewhere nice. It was a sort of a forest. It was almost like a Disney forest. Oh, lovely. And I was imagining, but, but sort of real-ish, but with a lovely lake I could go out and swim. But I, I, I wanted to visualise the colours and it almost to be like a, a photograph. Mm. And because I couldn't, that was sort of taking me away from it. Do you understand? I do. Um, and it, I, it was slightly frustrating because I thought, well, this is the same problem I have with books and all the rest of it. And yet I did feel safe there. I was sort of sitting across legs as if I was a little boy, mm -hmm. um, having a little skinny dip in the river because there's nobody around at all. And that's another thing about being in glass buildings as we are <laughs> and, uh, bit, you know, feeling b b watched all the time in London. That, that's a, that's a bit, bit another added thing. But it all comes to, you know, probably basic core issues. Um, but, yeah. I also, feel feel good. You've got to remember that with hypnosis, it's a skill. Mm. Um, and it's very typical on the first session with somebody that they don't quite go as deep as they might mm. hope they're going to go. Mm. They've got to learn to understand their mind, yeah. learn to understand what their, what their own personal unique experience is. Mm. What you've just been describing to me has given me loads of information mm. that the next time one would work with you, mm. I've got that information to help mm. you go in, deal with the colours, spend some more time wherever yeah. you may be. Um, and also the session that we've just done is a, a condensed version. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, it was more of a demonstration, but I was I was clear, very interested to see how I it could work for me. Mm. And I, I I must say that out of the few times in my life that I have attempt uh, given it a go, that has been the most satisfying. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So. But again, you've got because you were I mean, obviously people can't see, um, but you were demonstrating classic signs of trance mm. um, as we were going through that experience. Your eyelids were moving, mm. which again we see a lot within trance. People having rapid eye movement underneath their mm. eyelids which is it's, um, somewhat associated with the dream state that we experience mm. when we're asleep um, mm. your facial features were flattened you were breathing more slowly mm. as we came to the awakening you started to alert yourself started mm. to be moving around a little bit so you from my perspective you were definitely in a trance mm. it's just allowing yourself to learn what trance is 
and hopefully to get deeper the, the more I try it out, I, do, I, yes. I, I guess. Um, because I trust you. Mm. And I tell you another thing that is fantastic, because we're in the radio studio, hearing your beautiful dulcet <laughs> tones through my earphones was really um, adding to the whole effect. Excellent. I mean, you know, you... you <laughs> You get this on the NHS, my God, you know, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so but you thank- see, the thing was, for me, I was in a trance. Yes, we are in a radio studio. Mm. We're in a goldfish bowl, basically. Absolutely. Um, there were people going backwards and forwards. I yeah. didn't notice them. I did hear a bit of movement, but I thought, well, no. I, I was trying to think, oh, my God, they, they can see me. But I thought, well, they they probably wouldn't look in. No. They would just see two people sitting. They wouldn't see my eyes were shut. So yeah. then, I, then I started to distance myself from that because who cares? You know, that's where I need to get to. <laughs> and I think with, with, with hypnotherapy, the therapist always goes into a, a form of trance as well because I become very focused on the person I'm working with. I engage in my brain. We have this sort of flow of verbal diarrhea, if you want to call it that. But there's this connection to my thought patterns, the flow that comes out. I'm observing the person I'm working with. I'm in an altered state. Nothing else matters for me. You know, the um, challenges that I've been having at the office recently, um, various other challenges that have been going on, and by the way, that's therapists speak for being stressed, um, they weren't there in my mind at all. I relaxed into that. Yes, yeah. It, um, it felt like a shared thing, definitely, mm. which which is good. I didn't want to feel I'm, I was like, you know, just... <laughs> Keep you working when you you've you've left the office of the day. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely, but again, if if the if the environment was slightly different, we had lower light levels. Mm. I mean, the light level in here isn't too bad actually. It's not bright. I was quite. Um, it was quite dark when my mm. eyes were shut. And mm. um, the chair could be a reclining chair. Mm. But thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, I, I I feel all my problems are behind me now. <laughs> Hopefully, they will be. <laughs> Do you take cash or credit? <laughs> I take a drink. <laughs> Brilliant. So, Peter, thank you so much for such a fascinating insight into the world of hypnotherapy. Can you hear that? Oh, my God. Now, that's not... I can actually see the TARDIS... Well, it is appearing. I mean... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Peter, the doors are opened. You know what to do, just... Step through those doors. I'm in the TARDIS and it's bigger on the inside than the outside. Oh my God, who's coming into the console room? Gosh, it's it's Tom Hardy wearing a fireman's outfit. Well, hello, Tom. Intergalactica is this. Nick, Nick, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh! Oh! I was, uh, <laughs> I was fast asleep then. Um, no TARDIS. Oh, well. <laughs> Clearly a dream. But um, anyway, uh, Peter, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight and explaining everything about, well, lifting the lid on uh, hypnotherapy. And hopefully you might have um, ironed out a few kinks in my life armour as well. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Well, thank you for having me in the studio. And uh, you don't go away empty-handed because none of our celebrities do. It's your celebrity box of chocolates and uh, do, oh, do enjoy you. that. And as you're healthy eating, I won't be offering you any. <laughs> Bless you, my son. Uh, Peter Mabut, thank you very much. Trust in me, just in me. Shut your eyes and trust in me. Hold still, please. You can sleep safe and sound, knowing I am around. Slip into silent slumber, sail on a silver Slowly and surely your senses will cease to resist. Trust in me and just in me. Shut your eyes and trust.
Ah, 